Uh, we had a wonderful ceremony yesterday. We had, of course, the beautiful, beautiful medal ceremony for Professor Lubikowski. As I like to put it, a university is founded in 1364, I think it is, really know how to do stuff like that right. <laughs> you know, the choir sang, the flowers, the medals. Um, Professor Lubikowski gave a lovely uh, talk, which was funny and substantive and all wonderful. And there was an honor of Dean Rohner by Jagiellonian University, which was accepted by his wife. The only little thing that got messed up yesterday is that Monica had something to say. And she was all ready to say it. <laughs> but there were complications of which person was running which part, and that got a little bit fluffed over. So now, Monica now. is now. Now, before, <laughs> now. And so, Lana, which mic do you want her to be using? This one you said? Uh, this one. This one. Yes. Oh. No, 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 no. This is a camera. Yeah. This one. Okay, so just come kind of near this mic. Or maybe, can she do it I from can, there? I can just, yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that the face can make it here. <laughs> okay. Okay, just for the people Watch. who listen to the recording. Okay. Jane Dobry, good morning. That will be the extent of my Polish for right now. Okay. Well, you know, when one extraordinary man meets another extraordinary man, and we know who that is, extraordinary things happen. And that's how the program, the summer law program started. And it was really kind of humorous because I'm 100% Polish, as I like to say all grandparents and whatever. Um, and my husband came home and he said, Rhett was in today. And I said, oh, nice. And he said, uh, well, he said, the Berlin Wall is down. We can go to Poland without problem. And I said, well, that's wonderful. And he said, well, it's even more wonderful because he asked me if I'd like to do a summer law program in Krakow. And I said to him, oh, my God, he said, my Polish American wife is going to love this. <laughs> so without ado, further ado, they, they set on to it. And I will tell you, I remember the first year. It ran so smoothly. The gentleman who they sent to evaluate the program looked around and he and he told my husband and he told Red, remember that? He said it was the best run first year program he had ever seen. So I think the two of them did a wonderful job. Ralph loved the program and also the fact that it has grown to so many more aspects of uh, collaboration with the university. And so I can only say I'm so happy to see you here today and that know that all of you enjoyed it and that it has helped some people with their love life. That was a really good thing. We have that at the law school too. We have people who met at the library desk and now has a plaque on it, you know. So I just want to say hello to everybody. We are grateful. My family of nine was here yesterday. I have three left. Um, and very happy that my husband got the honor. And I just want to let, leave you with the fact that it a wonderful program. He loved it, and I wish he was here with us today. Thank you. This celebration was supposed to be in June 2020. It was going to be the 20th anniversary of the American Law Program the 20th anniversary of the Foreign Law School Center. There were gonna be a whole bunch of celebrations of other foreign law programs. We all know what happened in 2020. Then we thought maybe we could postpone to 2021. Now it's 2022. And unfortunately, of course, we had to suspend the program the last two summers. So this is the first time we've run the program since 2019. Uh, then we had various uncertainties that I won't bother naming. So the um, publicity for this went out later than it would have in an ideal world. Still, you know, we've had a wonderful turnout where you have um, 90 people registered for the barbecue. We have 60 people, 66 people registered tonight. 
Um, if you did not register for an event, there's always a few people who aren't coming. So, you know, we can add, you know, a couple people at the margins, you know, just if you're here, we love to see you at the events. I want to, uh, we are now going to start power pushing about the, uh, of course, now, because we were two years late, this is the 30th anniversary of the summer program. So it all worked out. And we are now going to do that celebration also in Washington, September 30th to October 2nd, as part of our regular law school reunion. We did this um, in 2018, I believe, for the 15th anniversary of the LLM program. A number of our Polish alumni came, Dean Pischelinski came, Juliana Kobierzynska came, this time P.O. Cvedo is also coming. And so um, that will really be a wonderful event. So all of you who live here, you know, visa waiver country, not, you know, not that hard to come to the U.S. We would love to see you in the fall. But today, I, one person I want to remember, I got an email from an alum in California. Where is Mary Patterson? We have an American alum who is here. She said, I think I might come. And here she is. So everyone, please give an extra special welcome to Mary, who came from California. And again, if we had been doing it in 2020, I think we would have had 20 Americans. I had people who wanted to come, but with all the delays and so on, it was smaller. So now we're going to get to our main purpose. We have six wonderful panelists. We are going to take them in the order they did the summer program, which means that Tomas will be first because he did the program in 97. So in the early years of the program, Professor Ludwikowski visited the law schools in Poland and we had people from all over Poland like Tomasz and Cesare are not from Jagiellonii and they're from other universities in Poland. And that was uh, you know, a big diversity. And at that time, the Polish students and the American students all lived in the dorm together for, four, for six weeks. Um, you know, different things have changed since. Uh, we, we try to maintain the core value of the interaction with the Polish American and third country students because we have LLMs who've come from other countries as well. And as I think you'll hear from our panelists, even though people often don't set out to take the program with that in mind, they often decide that was the most important thing about the program. So we are working on being creative about how we bring everybody together in a different setting when everybody isn't living together in a dorm and, and there are things about the schedules. These six people, including Cesare, who's online, have been asked uh, to talk about this. They're supposed to open for five to six minutes about how the IBTSLP, uh, and for those of some of them, two of these people, Tomasz and Cesare, did only the summer program because that's all that existed at the time. The other four also did the American Law Program and the LLM. So whatever program you did, how it impacted your life, and a couple of top pieces of advice for current students and recent graduates. And I said that impacted your life assumes professional, but it can be broader. And lawyers are usually full of advice. So I'm sure they have good things to say. So we're going to stop with Thomas. Each of you will stand up, come to the mic, because that's for the recording part. And then we'll hear Cesare online. And uh, Cesare, you're second. So after Thomas, we move to Cesare. And then we move down the line to Wojtek, Rafa, Kasha, and Asha. So. Thank you, Leah. I, I feel like an emeritus fellow now. So the, uh, the oldest uh, graduate in the class. So it's um, it's a great uh, great to be here. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. And uh, this uh, wouldn't happen if uh, if it's not uh, Red Ludwikowski and uh, and the whole program. I'm, uh, I owe uh, Red so much. Uh, so uh, so that's. Uh, that is even very difficult to to express the gratitude after what has happened uh but uh, it was uh, was um, a, a ordinary day uh, when i was sitting at home and uh, i got a call that there is uh, an option to apply for a boeing scholarship boeing at the time was uh, trying to persuade polish government uh, that he is the best supplier of the aircraft 
for Poland. So they uh, uh, sponsored a couple of uh, scholarships and, uh, and read, uh, get to know about it. So, and he informed the class and uh, the people that they are able to apply for it. So I did apply and I was awarded one. So, and it was, uh, was the happiest day of my life. And uh, I can tell that in professional life, it was, uh, it was a magical moment. Uh, after, so, so what happened next was, was, was uh, even, even more uh, interesting. Uh, I will tell you about two things, and this would be not law. Uh, surprisingly, although I spent 17 years at White and Case, I was a partner. At, it was it was interesting. Uh, uh, but uh, what is interest? What what uh, what was uh, the two words are lobbying and art? Uh, why why lobbying and why art? Uh, first of all, uh, after uh, this uh, one year stay at, at Catholic U, uh, I. Uh, uh, also, thanks to Red, uh, got a um, to a summer uh, summer associate program at uh, Hogan and Hartson. Hogan and Hartson at the time uh, today is a Hogan Lovells. Uh, it, it's a major major DC firm uh, focused on uh, government relations, uh, and they're like thirteen floors, huge uh, huge firm in downtown uh, DC. And uh, that, that's where I learned what lobbying is and how regulation look like and what energy is and how how we can work uh, with in, the, in this area. And it was uh, it was it was so appealing that I keep doing this today. I, I kept doing this at White and Case, and I continue it on, on my own firm. And this is a very professional service uh, today. Still in Poland, it is viewed as uh, something that is sort of. Uh, not interesting or uh, morally dangerous or or, or uh, uh, but but still people do need advice you know how to approach government how to persuade how to uh, advocate how to present the case how to organize uh, a campaign uh, toward uh, toward the government so so this is uh, this is uh, very important uh, to to know and this wouldn't happen without me and red red putting me into environment of Hogan and Hartson. Um, the second, uh, as you know, if you come over to another city for a few months and you, you, you have no family, no kids, um, you have plenty of time. So what you do in weekends? I mean, it's, uh, you may watch TV, you may play football, but, uh, but at some point it gets boring, right? So I spent uh, enormous hours in Washington DC museums and got uh, hooked by the contemporary art. And that, that's how it started. It was uh, so Hirschhorn and all these uh, National Gallery, uh, all these museums were very close to me at the time. So, um, and it got, I got hooked to a sort of uh, contemporary art to the extent that uh, recently during COVID, I wrote a book about it. And uh, so, so just uh, just to present you. So it's also sort of thanks to Red. <laughs> so Red put me into art to some extent because if if it's not if it's not the the scholarship, I wouldn't be uh, there and wouldn't have that much time to devote it to uh, to spend it into uh, into co in, in, co in contemporary art. So, um, so this is uh, maybe a few. So, so uh, Leah asked about some advice, right? So, what what could be, what could be advice? And I could obviously talk to younger colleagues after our our panel. Uh, I think, I think it's just one advice: to be open. Because if you are open, if you open uh, your mind into different sort of. Uh, areas if you do not exclude anything if you just think that why not if you just present put yourself into some environment and you, you just check you like it or not right the same with me with the contemporary art the same with with energy although i was pretty poor in physics uh, in in the high school uh, and, and I spent 25 years working energy law and, uh, and focusing on, 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 on Kirchhoff law and all these uh, sort of technical issues. So I have to learn that. Also, I was very poor. But if you are open to it, you just 
it, it opens sort of new uh, new horizons and new ways of thinking. So be open and just challenge yourself. Don't be afraid and go forward. I mean, it's uh, the best what I could tell you. Um, and thank you. Thank you, Red. So Chazar is the next speaker who is joining us online. Is he all queued up or do we have to do anything? I think I am. I hope you can hear me. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Professor Ludwikowski, Anya, and all the distinguished guests and, uh, and hosts of this event. Uh, I'm very sorry. I, I could not be with you in person. In person, I, I, I've been detained in Warsaw on business, but but I will make my trip down to Krakow tomorrow to, to see uh, Professor Anya and, and everyone. Uh, but maybe I, I thought I, I would just share my personal story as well uh, as to how I met Red in 1998. Uh, as, uh, as meeting Red completely changed my life and, and shaped who I am uh, today, both professionally but also, also personally. And, and, uh, it's very occasionally that you meet a person that has such a profound influence on your life and and uh, professor is exactly that person uh, to me and uh, so in 1998 back back then I was a young cheerful student uh, at the Białystok branch of uh, Warsaw University when professor Ludwikowski visited us to select students uh, for the summer law program uh, until this day, I, I, I really am not entirely sure what his selection criteria were at that time, but uh, perhaps it was, uh, uh, perhaps Professor thought that me and my exuberant uh, friends, Isa and Magda, were sort of package deal. So, nevertheless, we ended up coming to Krakow together to, uh, to explore the intricacies of the US legal system that we didn't know anything about at the time. Uh, and I remember very well that at that particular year, we got a chance to meet some of the fantastic uh, faculty members of Catholic University, Professor Garvey, uh, Professor Lipton, uh, were just a few of them. But uh, to me, obviously, meeting Professor Ludwikowski had the most uh, sort of uh, uh, the greatest impact. And uh, following successful completion of the program, uh, I wanted to stay in touch with Professor Ludwikowski and uh, some of you may not believe it, but back then we were actually writing and sending each other letters in uh, in this sort of old fashioned way. Uh, and in one of these beautifully penned uh, letter, I learned about the opportunity of of uh, applying for Boeing scholarship that Tomek just just mentioned. And uh, obviously, Professor Ludwikowski helped me a lot uh, in the process. And this is how I ended up going to the US to Washington DC in 1998 as a very young student. Uh, not so many years uh, after the fall of communism in Poland. And uh, as you can imagine, my life uh, turned upside down completely. I was simultaneously studying law in Poland, but also studying in, uh, in Washington, D.C. And throughout this entire period of time when I was in D.C., uh, Red Ludwikowski, Anya, they, they provided we, me with, uh, with guidance, with uh, advice, but also very much needed hot meal uh, during our regular dinners in their in their beautiful house uh, in, in, in DC. Um, Red also recommended me, and I think this was this was fantastic opportunity uh, for some of the internships that I had. And uh, I spent some time with Hogan Hudson that Tomek mentioned, the law firm, working, supporting Joe Bell, the, the founding partner of Polish branch of that firm. But the, the, the most uh, sort of exciting part was uh, working at the US uh, House of Representatives helping the U.S. Congressman Lincoln Diaz Ballard. This is something that I I will I will never uh, forget. Uh, all these experiences uh, sort of shaped my ambitions. They they very much influenced the trajectory of my legal career, and uh, and I'm very proud today to be an alumni of the program. I I have no doubts that it uh, had and hopefully it will continue to have a huge impact on on. Uh, many generations of, of uh, young lawyers to come. Uh, so, Red, thank you so very much. It's been an honor to, to, to be your student and thank you for, for giving me uh, such a life-changing opportunities. Uh, I mean, I don't want to sound pompous, but this program literally changed my life. So thank you very much. Uh, piece of advice to students, I mean, nothing particularly uh, exciting. Be open, be curious and, and, and grab opportunities when they arise. Thank you very much and uh, see you tomorrow.
Chazar, you can't hear from the audience. Professor uh, Lipkowski is yelling that you were at the top of the list. You really were. So <laughs> there. <laughs> oh, okay. Your face to your friends from Yavistov, Isa. And uh, you came later, uh, 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 second, for second grand. Okay. Um, I think I'll just repeat it for now, but uh, the problem is that he can't hear you, but tomorrow night we're having dinner, so you'll be able to all hear. He was correcting something about the year, Cesare, but he said that you were first, so it's all good, but we'll correct it all tomorrow night at dinner. Definitely. That's all good. Okay, the next person is Wojciech. Good morning. Uh, my name is Wojciech Jarosiński, and I have three remarks related to the programs. Mm. And first one uh, starts with a story, story from 1912. Actually, yes, 1912. And it's a story that takes place in the Antarctica in South Pole. Uh, in 1912, there are two parties that are trying to reach South Pole. They are competing. Uh, one is led by Scott, second is led by Amundsen. Until then, nobody reached South Pole. People tried and died. And uh, what happens? Amundsen gets to the South Pole. Scott also gets to the South Pole. But unlike Amundsen, he doesn't make it back. He never returns home. And you may ask, uh, how does that relate to the American Law Program, LLM, or the Summer Program? You see, Scott followed the path of British explorers that were just focused on what they know, what they took from, uh, from the UK, what they learned in the UK. Amundsen was different. He didn't stick to what he could learn from Europe, from the European heritage. He learned so much from the Inuits, from other cultures, from uh, people that surrounded him on, on other travels he had in, in the Arctic and the Antarctic. And I think that this program gives this great ability to compare legal systems that enable you to resolve unresolvable problems and, and offer higher level of legal services to your clients. Just thanks to that ability to, to take from different, different cultures, compare and see what's the best uh, from one and from the other and apply it wisely to your problems and to your clients. So that's the first remark. Uh, thanks to those programs, I'm certain I can offer better legal services to my clients. I wouldn't be able to do that without it. Second remark, uh, let me take you to another year, this time closer uh, to the uh, modern times. It's June 2010 in Washington, D.C. Lovely summer. Uh, people are, uh, are enjoying uh, great evenings on the 18th Street. Uh, drinking um, colorful drinks, uh, having great time. I'm also there in Washington, D.C. Rafa is there in Washington, D.C. and a bunch of friends from the program. But we are not enjoying those drinks. None of us. We are staying uh, in our dorms, in our flats, and we are doing legal writing assignments <laughs> every evening, including weekends, all the time. And um, at the end of the day, that was really helpful uh, because uh, in Polish education, we, we do not learn um, how to structure our way, way of thinking. So we spent multiple hours, many hours, too many hours on, on learning what's IRAC, what's crack. And you may say it's a uh, reduction of cognitive dissonance right now that I'm, that I'm happy about it. But <laughs> when implemented uh, at the law firm, after some time, you can see that you can actually monetize that knowledge. Because if you force the IRAC and crack on your associates and the firm gets bigger and uses IRAC and crack, uh, then you can see where mistakes are made, which parts you can transfer between the memos uh, and, and the court documents. That's impossible without the uh, tools uh, that you learn during these programs and which are absent uh, in, uh, unfortunately, in Polish uh, legal education. Mm. And third remark, uh, 
is uh, about a strong word. Um, Professor Faith Mullen, she, she cited uh, during those uh, classes, uh, Mark Twain, and I won't be able to, to repeat that as, uh, phrase exactly, but uh, Twain wrote something about you have three exclamation marks to use during your entire life. So this is one uh, that I'm using. And that's heritage, exclamation mark. I think what these programs did to Poland, they changed it. And when, when you're doing something, it, often you don't realize how much you affect people around you unless you step away and look from, from a side. And um, I see in, even in my associates who are graduates of these programs, so I assume it, it influences more of Poland, that those who graduated these programs, they differ. They have better tools. They have better understanding. They are more open-minded. What you did for those 22 years right now is really changing Polish legal culture without, and that's, that's done without likes, without superficial followers on social media, but it was done through a hard work of the founders and, and, and Yulia. So thank you for that, for that heritage. Thank you. Good morning, uh, everyone. Oh, don't touch the microphone. Uh, my, my speech probably will be not so wise and precise like Wojtek's, uh, but I'm, I would try, you know, to uh, share some thoughts uh, and being very honest with you. Um, actually, what was the motivation for me to, uh, to take, uh, 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 to be a part of, of the program? You know, uh, it was simply my uh, English deficit. That's, that's a very simple factor. You know, we have uh, uh, such a nice uh, joke when uh, the Polish guy is coming to London and he meets an Englishman and, uh, you know, very happy, asked by the uh, Englishman, what did you came here for? The post says, I came here to polish my English. And the response of the Englishman was the, but your English is Polish enough. So actually, <laughs> My first motivation was, you know, to polish my English. And actually, I was, you know, uh, looking for an opportunity. And actually, the, I started in 2008 with the uh, course at the uh, UC Davis, uh, California. Uh, and I'm not going to boast this program, but it was really uh, an interesting option. But, uh, 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 you know, I was uh, already working for something like 12 or 15 years. And, you know, uh, what was unique in the in the Catholic and uh, uh, Jagiellonian uh, University program that it's you know perfectly tailored for the people who are already working. You know uh, that's uh, an excellent uh, situation that actually you know the university comes to you and you don't have to go to the university to uh, I mean uh, 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 across the Atlantic. Uh, so actually, two th third of the program of the LLM program, you know, you can uh, simply stay at home and your hometown and, you know, combine the work, uh, find the balance between, let's say, work and education. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, how, how it started. I met uh, with Philip Weyman, uh, who was a good friend of mine, and then he introduced me to Leah. And this is, you know, the guys both uh, convinced me to, to be a part of this program. Uh, you know, I probably I should be awarded uh, as the uh, oldest student uh, of the program because I was 38 already when I made this decision to, to uh, participate. Uh, so, uh, Philip and Elia, especially thank you, you know, for giving me this courage and convincing me to, 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 to do this. Uh, so, uh, what, uh, would like, what I would like to um, uh, say, you know, it was a pretty hard time for me, you know, at this time. Work. And, and you know, and, and uh, passing exams. Let's 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 also be honest. You know, my uh, average grades wouldn't qualify me to get a KKG scholarship. So, <laughs> actually, the only opportunity for me to attend such a ceremony like yesterday was to sponsor it. You know, <laughs> uh, mm, you know, uh, uh, I would like to say to everyone, uh, you know, uh, make an LLM uh, study, go to DC. To DC, you know, uh, actually, when you are there, you realize that you, uh, you know, uh, DC is a part of our uh, common culture. You know, you have uh, Washington Monument, Lincoln Memorial, Capitol, White House next to you. You know, this is really something uh, incredible. You know, not mentioning, you know, the fact that we are also 
uh, have a chance and were honored to be in the courtroom during the court hearing in Supreme Court, United uh, States Supreme Court. And this is, you know, some uh, incredible experience. Uh, I learned a lot, of course, uh, during the, the, the studies, but uh, what, what I really appreciate most, uh, you know, uh, respect of the teachers, of the professors uh, uh, to the uh, students. Uh, thank you for this, uh, guys, because, you know, uh, you are the benchmark also for me uh, uh, when uh, I, I teach a little bit uh, and, you know, your openness, your readiness to help us, your, uh, you know, support was actually crucial that uh, I, I and my colleagues, we, we succeed in this. Uh, and I'm really very grateful for this, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid still, you know, uh, this is not the same here in Poland. I hope it will uh, it will it's changing, but you know uh, I really appreciate the fact that you know you are always aware that uh, failing an exam, is, uh, it's not a, a failure of student, but it's also a failure of of, of a teacher. And uh, thank you for these lessons and uh, for for your respect. Uh, so uh, what 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 actually uh, uh, now? I have a chance, you know, uh, to uh, uh, work on several. Uh, cross-border litigation case. I do a lot of litigation and also arbitration. And all of this, you know, uh, actually I think wouldn't be doable, wouldn't be, couldn't, couldn't happen without my uh, credentials I get from the Catholic University. So uh, really thank you very much for this. I mentioned, I can mention only one of the largest cases, you know, it's a dream case. Three years after uh, my graduation, I had a chance being back in DC for five months. I was responsible for, let's say, managing such a two complicated uh, uh, litigation based on the RICO law and arbitration pending in London. I had a chance, you know, to travel between DC and, and uh, New York, you know, several times coordinating two lawyers' firms. All of this, you know, kind of work wouldn't be for me. Uh, I couldn't conceive this, you know, doing this without, without uh, credentials from Catholics. So thank you very much for this. Thank you. Hello, good morning. Um, it's very, it's very nice to be here in person. I guess I'm still getting used to actually being present in real life in the meetings instead of just positioning my, myself in front of the camera in elegant top and pyjama pants like it happened, I think, to many of us during the pandemic. So this is really, really nice to be back in the real world again. Um, so I graduated as an LLM in 2012, uh, and then for seven years, um, I was also an LLM coordinator, um, and I worked with Professor Wortham and with, with Gaspar, who's now still in this role, uh, together with Luke now. Um, and so I think that my own experience um, as an LLM might have blended in sort of a bit with, um, with then my work um, as a coordinator because I had the privilege also to meet and, and observe uh, this LLM path of, of many different um, people. Um, but um, what I can say about the impact of the program um, on, on my life is definitely that it has shaped my professional career. Um, well, by, by broadening my horizons, um, no doubt about, about that, and, and kind of uh, directing me towards uh, more of the international um, dimension. Um, and so I can say with certainty that where I am now, I, um, I owe it to the, to the LLM program, that's, uh, that's for sure. Um, what I want to mention, um, the, for me, the two um, very important aspects um, of, um, of the program, the qualities, apart from the academic excellence, um, are the, um, the flexibility and the affordability, because um, at the time I wanted to finish my legal education in Poland, so also do the bar training, um, and, and it's three years. Um, for us, um, so I wouldn't be able to do the regular LLM and I wouldn't have a chance um, to get to know the, the American law. So um, I think for me and, and for many other um, students, it was a great facilitation um, that we were able to do uh, part of the classes here in, in Krakow with professors coming to us and then to go um, to DC um, for, for the shorter period than, than one year. 
And so I think this, this kind of flexibility to, to allow um, to, to study without putting your, um, your career or, or your education here on hold, it's, um, it's crucial because it really allows um, more people to, to actually go for it and to, and to do the program. Um, and, and I think it was really the same uh, for many other um, people who were working here or have, has, had family obligations. And so um, I think it, it's really, um, it, it's really a, a, crucial, a crucial aspect of the program. But coming back to the impact um, again, um, so for me, um, the, the program gave me the skill set um, that allowed me to be much more bold uh, in my career um, choices. And it also was, um, was a, I, I, uh, I think what mattered is all the networking part, meeting a lot of inspiring people who, who showed me um, what, what can you do, how uh, th that there are many different paths that you can take as a lawyer. Um, so, so all the networking part was also very, um, very important, and um, of course, also um, being an LLM, having the LLM degree in my CV, I think it it make, made me stand out from from the crowd, which um, which uh, played the role. But I consider that really the uh, the most important thing for me was was kind of indirect is how it impacted me and and how it. Uh, allowed me to, to go further. Um, and so uh, to conclude just a piece of advice for the students, I would say um, to enjoy it um, to the fullest and to benefit to the fullest because it really, I think, opens, um, opens the door uh, for many ideas and paths that you hadn't considered before. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Asha. I'm an LLM graduate. And um, Professor Wortham here uh, once told me that um, everyone who took the LLM program found it valuable, but for surprisingly different reasons. And to this, I might add my own reflection that uh, the most important things uh, I got from the program were the ones I did not expect um, or even imagined uh, to get. Um, and I was wondering, why is that? And thank you. <laughs> and the best answer I could come up with was that um, the entire LM project uh, is much bigger than its particular elements, uh, bigger than the ECTS credits, bigger than the, um, the law degree, even bigger than the hours um, you spend in class with uh, great professors. Uh, it's like, um, and I think all of our stories here confirm that, it's like setting in motion a chain reaction, uh, only one in which you don't know where or what the end element is. And um, this additional surprise element uh, was something slightly different uh, for all of us, and it's bound to be different for any of you who will decide to complete the program. And uh, to put more body to what I'm trying to convey here, um, what I expected to get from the program, and I know some of you can relate to that, was to practice my legal English, uh, to get an international law degree, uh, to enhance my job or opportunities, and to learn something new and maybe do something fun. And all of those things I got fair and square. Now, what I did not expect, but got anyway, um, was to do um, a series of interviews with LAP professors, which were then published, uh, to land an internship uh, with a big Warsaw, War uh, Warsaw law firm, uh, to write for Public Interest Law Institute in New York, uh, and to do a project with uh, Institute of Public Affairs in Warsaw and Polish American Freedom Foundation. All of these things were 
either initiated by or connected with the people I uh, got to know during the American Law Program. Uh, actually, most of the things that you can see on my bio over there are linked in one way or another to the um, project. Uh, but this is still far from all. Here are um, six things which I did not quite imagine at the time, but which I learned while becoming an LLM. And the first one is relationships matter. And not only because they are one of your biggest assets, but simply because um, people are fascinating and each one has a story that can enrich your own in some absolutely mysterious way. Uh, second, it's okay if someone is better than you at something. Instead of being offended and jealous, just lean into it and enjoy it and rip off the benefits of knowing that person. Uh, third, you can have uh, serious health problems and personal turmoil going on and still experience the best traveling time. Uh, fourth, you can leave work for three months and the world will not collapse around you and neither will your career. Uh, on the contrary, it's likely to pick up at a new pace. And fifth, it's very beneficial uh, to do something just for you every once in a while. Uh, just because you want it and you feel like it and not for any strictly tailored professional reason. And last but definitely not least, uh, every day can be an upper body day if you are determined enough and you have friends to motivate you at the gym. <laughs> maybe, maybe those things are already obvious for you, but they weren't for me. And um, to wrap this up, because probably we are uh, ready for the barbecue, um, I wanted to tell you about a sign um, me and my LLM friends uh, saw when traveling um, in the Outer Banks. And for those of you who don't know, Outer Banks is a range of islands uh, on the East Coast in North Carolina. So the sign was placed on a dilapidated wooden house, which um, looked like a perfect scenery of a classic horror movie. <laughs> and the sign read, uh, check this out, dare to dream the impossible dream. And at first I was like, really? <laughs> and then I thought, this is very American. <laughs> but <laughs> when, you, when you consider it logically, when you start dreaming the impossible dream, it's not impossible anymore. So I guess my piece of advice is, uh, and I think this is coherent with what we've all been saying here, um, if you wish to live on a different continent for a while, uh, study regular courses at an American university, apprentice at the US court, um, make friends with lawyers and professors, uh, which will be there for you, um, or anything similar, actually. Uh, but you think, like me, that this will never happen to you, then uh, I would advise you to entertain that uh, wish for a little while and to dare to wish it. And it might turn out that this dilapidated wooden shack on Outer Banks is much closer than you realize. Thank you. So we actually have about half an hour before the barbecue. And so um, we are going to give an opportunity for other people uh, who might want to share a memory of their time. It's a little complex with the mic, but Lena's going to help with us. We have a mic that we can take to people. And so while that's getting organized, I have my own memories flooding because, um, of course, we had Rafa and Wojtek's group. And last night, 
who I think is going to be here later today, Vincenzo Senatore was with us, who's Italian. They also had an Irish person, a Nigerian. I mean, they had a whole gang there. And uh, as, some, as someone, I think Steve commented last night, not to be in the stereotype, uh, Vincenzo's a great cook. So they lived together in the dorm, <laughs> except for Rafa, who had a little more money than living in the dorm. But everybody else lived in the dorm together and enjoyed that. Now, what Asha is referring to is she was with Cuba and Justina and uh, Luke and the other Cuba who's not here. And Luke was on a physical fitness kick. I believe you were the leader of this. And their group was really in this maniac, like gym every day, you know, uh, good nutrition. <laughs> I mean, they were... It's really true. Um, a couple of them at least looked way fitter at the end of the summer than they looked at the beginning of the summer. So it's all kind of just about how you organize yourself. Uh, and Rafa, two of the people, I don't want to pinpoint people's ages, but two of the people in Washington doing the program this summer, I think are in their mid forties. And I, um, I won't actually, I'm not going to name names here, but one of my favorite uh, my, well, I have so many favorite memories, but a nice memory from this year was uh, we're back to doing the program live. I teach the first live class in November, last November. So trying to be COVID aware, trying to, so we did what we used to call, we did our pizza nights, but we, I insisted that we, and Yulka is fantastic at organizing things. So we, she found us a restaurant outdoors and, you know, it's ventilated and it feels reasonably safe. And so we have these three dinners that students can sign up for. So I'm at the dinner and the woman across from me says uh, something about she graduated from law school in 97 and she became a member of the bar in 2001. And the person sitting next to me, whose name I won't name, said, I was born that year. <laughs> you know? And I will just say that both of them ended up in the top 10% and got scholarships. And one of the things that I think um, is, it's, it's, it's unusual in Europe. I mean, in many parts of the world. The idea is you're very age graded. There's a track, you get on a time. If you don't get on this track when you're 15, if you don't get on this track when you're 18, you know, you're not getting. The idea that somebody goes to law school later, the idea that somebody goes to medical school later um, is just, it's, again, it's a different philosophy. And it's good to expose yourself to different philosophies, you know, because we have at our law school many people who have retired from the military, retired from the federal government, and then go to law school. And that's part of the American ethos, the American dream. We love starting over. There's always time to dream the impossible dream. And people can say we're crazy optimists and all that, at the same time, a dose of it's kind of good. <laughs> and it's always good to have these different perspectives. So now, um, Lena knows how to organize this. Is there anybody here who wants to comment about your own experience? Um, you can also ask a question of these folks if you want to, but would anybody here like to comment? What? Any shot? Well, you know what? I can pick on, I knew I could count on Sarah. So Sarah will comment as a teacher on her experience. And she is with one of the, a student of hers who she, who does say is one of the best students she's ever had. <laughs> I don't know if you would like to take the stand oh, or whatever you would oh. I think it would be perfect, but okay. if, if you don't mind, if okay. you right. can stop sharing. You can come up here. I'm sorry. Well, thank you. I am honored to be here. And as most of well, some of you know, I'm very shy. So this is very hard for me. <laughs> Actually, not true, but I am so honored to be here today. <laughs> and I'm, I just want to say what a privilege it is and to have worked with Professor Lipikowski for so long and to have had that wonderful opportunity to have worked with Professor Dean Rohner and with Monica too and uh, done so much from our, our law school and of course it's great to have Dean Payne here and 
we all owe so much to Professor Wortham in so many different ways. So I'd like to give her a round of applause too. For And I know so many of you here and have had the pleasure of being in class with you. And I do need to say that from my perspective, this program and this opportunity changed my life too. I arrived in Poland, it was probably about 15 years ago, although that's really hard for me to believe. And it was on May Day and the person who was going to meet me got called away because of a family emergency. Um, I had found a cab, the cab driver didn't speak English, and I got to Krakow and everything was just crazy. And I was trying to think, what is going on here? Where am I? And then the next, I think it was a day later, I got to go to Jagiellonian and start classes, and I met some of the most wonderful people I have ever met in my life. And I learned so much about the subjects that I teach. Um, many other wonderful opportunities opened um, with Shemek. I went to Woosh and was able to speak at the university there. And both in the United States, some of you have come to my home and here we've had lots of fun dinners and opportunities to go way beyond our courses. And I'll tell you that as a professor, some of you know, when you step outside your own culture, when you learn from your students and from colleagues in other places, you gain so much yourself. And the way that I teach in the United States is different because I've been here, because I've learned from all of you. And I can't express my gratitude. It is so great for having had the opportunity to participate in this program. So thank you all very much. Shemek, all right. See, one thing you're taught in teacher school, if you go to it, is not to fear silence. And some people, there's whole cultural studies about how long people can tolerate silence. If you're teaching a class and you ask the question, you just stand there. And eventually, somebody breaks the silence. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, well, Ali, um, it's an honor to be here. And, uh, well, what could I say? Well, time and time again, it comes back to be here. It's so wonderful to be here. I mean, Krakow is Krakow, but at uh, this hour or another time uh, while uh, the summer the summer law program takes place. Uh, well, usually it's a guest, but I was in 1998. So, well, I got no Cesare over there. We were at the same time. Uh, and, uh, well, I got no Professor Ludwikowski uh, also in Warsaw because uh, at my time, uh, the, uh, the meetings were, well, in various places, well, among of them was who was Warsaw, so we met over there. Once again, I don't know what was the way we were chosen, but well, I was, it was really great. Uh, well, I came here as far as I remember from, from which I was, I think, only one. And in fact, uh, some extent, we made a kind of group with a couple of other students from various other Polish universities. Among of them was uh, were people from Bielystok, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and also it was great to meet uh, American students to to be able to meet with them well, talk well. It it, it hasn't been something so common like right now that uh, it's possible to talk English well all over. Um, so it's really, it was really great. How it impressed me later? Well, I still had contact with a Catholic University, and in 2004, 2005, when I was choosing where I would go for Fulbright program, I decided I would, I would go to Catholic University. And well, I spent there nine wonderful months, uh, well, meeting Leah, meeting Professor Dagen uh, over there, well, later, already when I came back and she was, as far as I remember, at Summer Law Program. Yeah, it was Summer Law Program or American, American Law Program. Okay, well, <laughs> still, well, it was possible to, to take her to the University of Łódź um, uh, for, for, well, for a moment, but well, once again, wonderful, wonderful moment. Well, in, uh, in, uh, while I was in, 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 uh, in Washington, well, I met Monica Ronner and Professor Ronner, who, 
well, who was taking care of me uh, all the time I was over there. Uh, well, I remember wonderful times with talking, with discussing varied issues, well, meeting at their house. Well, it was really marvelous time. Uh, and it truly impressed a, a lot of moments, well, that came later to so my uh, education at the at the faculty, well, first in, in Wojda, then right now in Szczecin, uh, while my other practice, like uh, lawyer's practice, like uh, at the Court of Arbitration, well, it tr truly uh, widens views and it's something marvelous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yulka has told me that we could go to the barbecue a little early, so I'm not forcing you to sit here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's Sosha. Hey, Sosha. <laughs> okay. Uh, glad to have many uh, future students with us. I see quite a few. Um, so, if there's anyone else who wanted to say something, Daniel, come up. And if you're thinking you might want to, why don't you get yourself sort of queued up, you know, so we can get people up here. And Daniel Zatorsky, who's in Kasha's class. Since I, I heard the professor saying that we're ready to have the barbecue, I decided, hey, <laughs> stay a little longer. Uh, but no, I, I just want to uh, mention two uh, very important aspects of the program. For me uh, personally, one is the first one is um, perspective. Uh, namely, I, from my point of view, uh, the American law program, the LLM, summer law program, uh, gives one perspective on uh, things that happen in Poland. In, in, for example, legal education. Now, I remember a very short uh, story when speaking uh, with the professor about you know, my experiences in, in DC, I said, professor, it's really great that, uh, you know, I know the professors uh, at CUA, they know my name. Throughout law school in Poland, throughout the whole five years, I don't think there's a single professor who knew my name. And, the prof and uh, Professor Wortham was like, that's crazy. <laughs> and uh, I think the years, uh, having finished law school here and finished the CUA, it's good to have this perspective that, yes, there were some crazy aspects to the Jagiellonian. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is also a perspective on uh, the legal profession. Mm, there's a lot, there are a lot of uh, debates about how the uh, legal profession and access to the legal profession should be structured. Uh, there are many debates that maybe five years to get a master's is not enough time. After that, you need three years of the bar training to become a uh, beginner lawyer. Uh, well, in the United States, you have law school. They, you take the bar exam and you start practicing. So it's it's this. I from in my opinion, the program gives the program gives one perspective that yes, there's in the. Uh, legal debate in Poland, there's a lot of nonsense being said, and it's good to see sometimes through the nonsense that is written in, in the papers. Uh, and the second very important aspect uh, of the program is what uh, Kasia alluded to, namely boldness. At least in, in my time, uh, I know how that sounds. Uh, I, th I think it was very perceived sometimes unattainable to do international work, uh, to that maybe Polish lawyers will not be as good as, for example, English lawyers or American lawyers to practice internationally. But uh, that's not the case. Polish lawyers are uh, as good as any other lawyer. And sometimes maybe we don't see it. Maybe this has changed. I don't know. Uh, but at least what I can say with certainty is that the program did give me a good perspective on this, that this boldness that, yes, we can do uh, international work as good as, as the other foreign lawyer. That's in a nutshell, thank you. 
And I, oh, let me, you work your way up here, Red. I thought you might want to say something, Red. Um, with Daniel, I remember this conversation. And of course, part of why I said it's crazy is Daniel's a very good student. I mean, you sort of, some students you can maybe imagine the professor didn't know their names, but Daniel's like a really good student. So you're going, really? Uh, and I think again, now Daniel is working in Germany. Kasha is working in Belgium. We have um, Vincenzo is here from London. You, you, you will look and we had people who I corresponded with who had thought about coming Croatia, Germany. Uh, hopefully when we, um, in the fall, we can get people from even more countries to come to the United States. But we do already have LLM alumni working in many countries. And I think exactly, uh, Kasha was recently promoted to being head of her unit at the European Commission. And I think exactly what Daniel said uh, is true, you know, that we have really world-class lawyers who are recognized as world-class lawyers. And that's great. <laughs> Well, my goodness, I did not plan to speak today, but my my wife pushed me and said, well, maybe you will tell some personal stories. Well, I start with a story which is not very personal. Actually, it is a story how this program started. I was, okay, I was already in the States. Uh, because martial law was imposed here and, uh, well, let's say they told me, Professor, you are telling jokes and stories about the uh, highest uh, uh, Russian or Soviet uh, leaders. Uh, we cannot tolerate it uh, more. Uh, we, you have four people uh, uh, to go with, take $100 per person and one suitcase. And I landed in the States and uh, finally in the beautiful mansion house in the forest uh, house, uh, like Paris, uh, Italian Paris uh, of uh, a professor Russell Kirk. Uh, well, I spent there, um, uh, well, maybe one month, two months, uh, I had to to maintain my family, so I started uh, uh, to lecture here and there. And suddenly, one name which was not mentioned here should be Professor Horoshnitsky. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there. Michał Horoshnitsky from Jagiellonian University showed up in the same place. And uh, he said, uh, Red, maybe in a few years you will be able to go back to Poland. I will be with you. We will do something together. And uh, well, a couple years later, uh, I was on sabbatical in Germany and in Hamburg and uh, the Berlin Wall you know what happened and uh, well the first person in Warsaw I met was Professor Horoshnitsky, Michał Horoshnitsky. He said, Red, my goodness, come with me to Jagiellon University, we will do something great. And my goodness, it is how it started. Michał Horoshnitsky, great man, he was everywhere, he was so active. Uh, he knew everything about this atmosphere in the country, which was in the process of transformation from uh, non-market economy to market economy. So we had to learn a lot of tricks. Well, it was about this great guy. Now, my wife pushed me. No, don't believe me, but um, it is personal. Uh, when uh, I came back to the States and I began, uh, um, well, I already worked for Catholic University of America. Um, uh, one day, uh, State Department 
um, a gentleman who was previously counsel, American counsel here, called me and said, all right, we need your help. Uh, well, there are two students uh, who will work on the master thesis, and they are coming here, please, please, maybe said the school will take care about them. I said, well, I would do my best. And uh, two, three days later, he called again and said, both girls have names Anya, Anya, but one is blonde, one is black. Blonde Anya and black Anya, they are sitting there. Oh, no. <laughs> oh well, they, <laughs> they showed up. Uh, somebody uh, got them from the airport, or at least one of them. Uh, but both came to my office and I took them where? To the office of Dean Ronner. My God, it was late evening. Uh, to the office of Dean Ronner and Ralph said, my goodness, lovely, uh, you are lovely, uh, 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 and open the desk and gave us uh, 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 small, small, small glasses of cognac. <laughs> we, obviously, we were prepared. And uh, well, later on, what happened, a number of adventures they uh, graduated, got the diplomas, uh, well, and uh, two adventures. We are, we are in Poland, uh, and uh, one of uh, these Anyas uh, came uh, to, during the program, visit us uh, in uh, Krakow. And uh, with the students, uh, we had a field trip in Zakopan. And, uh, well, we, two of us climbed on Granati. Those who love mountains know well, how, how important the Granatis are and how difficult sometimes. We took Kulczynski Schlepp going down. Uh, well, there was a lot of snow, and we fell down 200 meters. Um, uh, well, my visitor in Krakow was taken by helicopter to Zakopane. Survived, nothing broken. Well, and well, second adventure, in, it will be last one. Uh, well, the blonde Anya visited um, us again in Siwe, and uh, well, she was staying in one of the dormitories and said, well, well may maybe there are mountains here too. Uh, I said, yes, uh, um, I, I even plan to go to Shenandoah uh, tomorrow. Take me, please, she said. I said, yes, okay, but they told us that there will be one meter of snow tomorrow. Uh, so we, we are taking some risk. Uh, we took this risk. The snow, you never seen the snow like this. Uh, never even in Poland. We are <laughs> climbing. And we had to go down. We did not. We could not see my car. It was all covered by snow. We did not have any options but to look for a nice hotel. Obviously, uh, we took uh, two rooms, and uh, oh well. But um, two weeks later, we married. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.